Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. And now is the time for all of us to define our own role. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. The world's problems fit on three sides of a triangle. It's one versus many man versus nature, and the unfortunate foundation is long-term versus short-term. We had already income inequality that was fueling income, race, gender inequality. We have a climate emergency, which we can't walk away from. There's no doubt that the very survival of the human race requires us to act. Any recovery stimulus should have green conditions attached to it. Energy prices should reflect real costs. You need private sector capital, private sector ingenuity, private sector technology, and private sector capabilities to come to the party. You need enormous trust between the private sector and the public sector for this to actually work. We have to change our economy dramatically in the next 20 or 30 years, and the next 10 years is absolutely decisive. The recovery has to be greener, than any of the previous recoveries. And in order to do that, we need to ensure that the stimulus package, including fiscal and monetary, are much greater uh, than they were before. So we cannot waste this opportunity um, to ensure that uh, the uh, very precious money that's raised from the next generation is spent on green and low carbon. We will now start a quite a high number of task forces to look at all the different issues and we will present all those ideas to the people assembled in Davos. But at the same time, we will make Davos very different, very open to ensure that we do not fall, uh, fall back to old recipes, but that we really look at forward-oriented solutions. Young entrepreneurs, especially for de from developing countries that are there and can see the right problem, can really step up and create solutions. Finding profitable solutions to problems of the people and the planet, and we're starting to see firms move to that, and we're seeing firms that behave responsibly in that way actually doing better on conventional measures of profitability and doing better in this particular period. We've also seen social entrepreneurs step in in incredible ways. Not only has it exposed the pre precarious reality, but then it has also exposed the opportunity to recenter the reset around the most vulnerable and those on the edge where um, it only takes something like a pandemic or um, difficult circumstances to slide into poverty. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need, not just to have a tech job, but a job that is increasingly tech enabled in almost every part of the economy. If we can empower consumers with all of this, I think we unleash this next generation to have a much broader impact more quickly. We can never again allow our health, education, care systems to be underfunded. We need our imagination here. Possible is being redefined each and every day right now. So the next time someone tells us uh, that tackling climate change is either too costly or too difficult. I think we need to remind them and remind ourselves of what just is happening right now. We not only have to demand change, but also create change. We have to live up to the expectations which we have created and we will do so. 
Yeah. It will never return to like it used to be. I thought the 80s, which I took on, was like taking candy from a baby legitimately. It's easier now than it was in the 80s. I didn't think I'd live long enough to see that again. The greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the motherfucking planet is taking place, and one-tenth of a percent of the planet is participating. You don't have to be rich to be taking uh, advantage of this. This was the beginning of the greatest transformation of wealth the world has ever fucking seen since World War II. See, I know what he was going to do. I knew what he, and I know what he's going to do now. And he hasn't even got started. Now, what are you, what are you going to tell your kids and your grandkids 25 years from now when they say, gee, daddy, gee, grandpa, what were you doing other than having your thumb up your big fucking ass during the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the world? What were you fucking doing? Fuck all, nothing. That's what most of you will tell them, your grandchildren and your children. It's never going to get any better than this, kids. This is the, as I said on YouTube, the eye of the perfect motherfucking storm. This is it.